simple advice from former President Barack Obama, do not cast your vote for a politician who thinks that you do not matter. Impactful words as the political shock waves from the racist comment about Puerto Rico spewed at Donald Trump's pre-approved messaged rally in New York City over the weekend continued to reverberate in an impactful way. Politico has new reporting about how those heinous comments are being felt heavily in the must-win state of Pennsylvania. It is home to the third largest Puerto Rican population in the United States. Norberto Dominguez, a precinct captain with the local Democratic Party in Allentown, said this, quote, it is spreading like wildfire through the community. It is not the smartest thing to do, to insult people, a large group of voters here in a swing state, and then go to their home asking for votes, he said. And yet, <laughs> of course, that's exactly what the disgraced ex-president is about to do. In two hours' time, Trump is holding a rally in Allentown, Pennsylvania, a city with a large Latino population. Politico also spoke with Victor Martinez, an Allentown resident who owns the Spanish-language radio station La Mega. He said of Puerto Rican voters in the area, quote, if we weren't engaged before, we are all paying attention now. He added that the morning radio show he hosts was chock full of callers on Monday, sounding off about the Trump rally comments, including a Puerto Rican Trump supporter who's now telling people not to vote for the former president. Just one week out from Election Day and the reaction to this gross remark has been strong. A crush of Puerto Rican celebrities, including J-Lo, Ricky Martin, Bad Bunny and Mark Anthony, have all put support behind Vice President Kamala Harris. Take a look at the video Mark Anthony put out, reminding us that comments like the one we heard on Sunday are not just out of the blue. This is Mark Anthony. Even though some have forgotten, I remember what it was like when Trump was president. I remember what he did and he said about Puerto Rico, about our people. Puerto Rico. I remember after Hurricane Maria devastated our island, Trump blocked billions in relief while thousands died. I remember when our families lacked clean water and electricity, Trump threw paper towels and called Puerto Rico dirty and poor. I was not surprised because I also remember that he launched his campaign by calling Latinos criminals and rapists. rapists. He told us what he'll do. He'll separate children from their families and threaten to use the army to do it. This election goes way beyond political parties. Let's remember what the United States represents and stands for. United, regardless of where we're from. I am Mark Anthony and I remember. That's why I support Kamala Harris for president. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. Wow. Puerto Rico's largest newspaper, El Nuevo Dia, just endorsed Harris, saying the island has an ally in the vice president and the archbishop of San Juan de Puerto Rico called upon Trump to disavow the comments and personally apologize for them. We won't hold our breath. He's not a big apologizer, but we'll see if he does it. We'll be watching tonight in Allentown. It's where we start the hour with some of our favorite experts and friends. Victor Martinez, the Allentown radio host, who was quoted in that great piece of reporting from Politico, joins us. Former chief Republican strategist and senior advisor for the Lincoln Project, Stuart Stevens, joins us. And with me at the table, Democratic strategist Aisha Mills is back. Um, Victor, let me start with you. Just Take me through more of the calls that you got this morning. It's probably the most treasured piece of data or information that we can get our hands on. Well, listen, the callers yesterday and today have been clear. They are upset. They are mad. They cannot believe that this was said on such a stage that any country could be called trash. And then for us Puerto Ricans, then, of course, uh, Puerto Rico. So they, they are angry. They're upset, uh, and they cannot, they cannot believe it. You know, what's interesting to me, having covered the Trump story for nine years, is that, um, I mean, Trump has called countries shithole countries. Donald Trump <laughs> has talked about separating children, and when confronted with the horror of an infant's squeal, said that the horror is the deterrent. You know, he never backs down. He never apologizes. Mm -hmm. Are you expecting him to apologize tonight for his political <laughs> purpose, and do you think people will buy it? Well, number one, no, I don't expect them to apologize. And I'm glad you asked that question because I specifically asked my audience this morning that I told my audience, okay, so if all of a sudden 
Trump finds God and decide that he wants to apologize or take back or distance himself from those comments, would it be okay? Would you take it? Um, my audience overwhelmingly said no, too late. Some of them even said the train has left the station. Um, he could have mm. done it Sunday. He could have done it Monday. He could have even done it this morning, and yet he didn't. I had a listener who was very uh, interesting because um, she called and she said, I followed Trump on True Social, and he found time yesterday at 2 o'clock. She was very specific. At 2 o'clock to go to True Social and criticize Fox News for having Michelle Obama on the air. But yet he hasn't found time to go to True Social and distance himself or apologize for what happened in his rally. So those are the type of comments that I'm getting from the audience who obviously are now very engaged. And, and I will give you two pieces of, of breaking news. Uh, major Puerto Rican superstar Don Omar, who has uh, been part of the Fast and the Furious movies, and he's mm -hmm. a very well-known artist, just posted on his social media, um, Puerto Rico is my homeland and my identity. And today, more than ever, I race my island's flag in pride. It's time to turn the page. We are not going back, supporting Kamala Harris. And another piece of breaking news, Jennifer Gonzalez, the Puerto Rico representative in Washington, um, and now also candidate for governor in Puerto Rico, a, a strong Trump supporter, just now in Puerto Rico television said that this comments will cost Donald Trump in the state where Puerto Ricans live. I was on the air when Donald Trump uh, made his trip to the island after it was uh, devastated. Um, and we focus a lot on the, on the moment, right? Sort of throwing like t-shirts at a baseball game, the paper towel into the audience. But the, the, the substance of what he said and did um, w w was just as lacking in empathy or understanding um, that these are our fellow Americans and they're suffering mightily. Um, do you, and, and there's so much that's been made about the inroads that Donald Trump has made in the Latino community. Do you think that this crystallizes who he really is and moves someone from Trump to Harris? Or do you think it just suppresses the Trump vote? No, absolutely. I think that this has energized and activated the Puerto Rican community um, like never before. Um, you uh, spoke about Hurricane Marie and what happened when he went to Puerto Rico. Um, you know, they say time heals all, you know, wounds. And I think time has passed. And even though we were upset with what happened um, after Hurricane Maria, we kind of just, you know, we let it go. What happened on Sunday has brought back all those feelings. Mm. Um, uh, uh, what happened on Sunday reminded us, oh, wait a minute, that's right. Mm. This is the guy who threw the paper towels. This is the guy who said that we were poor and dirty. This is the guy that who wanted us, uh, wanted to trade us in like a used car. This is a guy who withheld funding approved by Congress to help us in the most needed time of our lives. Oh, and now he's calling us trash. And the reason why I say he's calling us trash, even though he didn't say it himself, is because the fact that, because he hasn't denounced it, because mm -hmm. he hasn't distanced himself from it, he's obviously then agreeing with it. It's like if he said it himself, uh, mm -hmm. because if I don't want someone to speak on my behalf, I will absolutely put a stop to it, and, and he hasn't done it yet, and we don't think he's going to do it. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. And, and one more thing, I, I made a comment to, to another interview that I was doing that I said this was like a gift from the gods. What are the chances that Kamala Harris is at a Puerto Rican restaurant in Philadelphia <laughs> the same day, at the same time that this is happening in the Trump rally in New York? What are the chances that a week before Kamala Harris put out that Mark Anthony spot that you played um, about reminding us what happened during Hurricane Maria, and this happens on Sunday um, at the Trump rally in, in New York? You know, because Trump is running to stay out of jail, I, I personally am always um, uh, on alert for him to say and do anything. So in case he does, let me just play some of his remarks from, from uh, the wake of Hurricane Maria. This is back in October 2017. I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. Every death is a horror. But if you look at a real catastrophe like Katrina, and you look at the tremendous 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that died. And you look at what happened here with really a storm that was just totally overpowering. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. Now, what is your what is your death count as of this moment? 17? 16 certified. 16 people certified. 16 people versus in the thousands. Uh, you can be very proud of all of your people, all of our people working together. 16 versus literally thousands of people. Uh, you can be very proud. I, I, I don't even know what to say about someone who's like, meh, meh. What would we come in at? 16 dead? <laughs> I mean, what? It, uh, it's unbelievable. I'm glad you played. I'm glad you played that audio because I was talking about that this morning. There was a report that I found on NPR from September of that year, where uh, George uh, Washington University published uh, a report where uh, they uh, were able to corroborate that there was 2,900 people that died uh, because of the Hurricane Maria, because of the lack of medical services, uh, because of lack of power, all due because of the hurricane. But it's not just that. After Maria, there was a second hurricane that came in months later. After that second hurricane, there was an earthquake. We all remember the earthquake that were happening for some reason in Puerto Rico for like two or three weeks every single day, two or three times a day. During that entire time, during that entire process, the Trump administration was withholding funding already approved by Congress to help Puerto Rico and the people in need.